But when I'm working on my desk, I've noticed that the spacing seems to be good here. So the sketchbook that I'm using is only about an A4 size. Normally, if I was actually doing this reference without the camera, I'd probably even consider doing this a lot larger, A3 size or even A2 size. So you can just enjoy getting into doing the mark making. Okay. So our first step really is to is to work out our information. And you can start just by looking you don't have to worry about um, I've, I've just picked up a PB pencil and I oh, I'm gonna stand up actually because I find it easier. No I can't do that because I can't do it away. Okay. I won't then. <laughs> right, so I'm going to start blocking in the shape of this um, cow parsley head that's predominantly in my picture. And I'm just doing a, a nice cup shape. Just swinging time. Okay, so just, just, just really roughly pulling it down so that I can just start to to work out and the line that I've got is has got a slight angle to it very slightly down here and then we've got another pretty little selection around here so I just want to encourage you just to pick up your little pencil it's going to be fairly soft just very roughly start marking in where you think these stems are going oh right is it okay you can't Bill says you I'll press it stronger with my pencil. Bill says you can't see the the marks very well. And there's a diagonal there which is leading up to this one. So it's really up to us how much we want to put into the picture really. That one's just shooting off over there somewhere. Okay. It's just enough just to make it pretty and interesting what we want, isn't it, really? Oh, yeah, and that's a faint one. So if we leave it and concentrate on this, I'm not even looking at what the time is, actually. And then what we're going to do in a minute, once we've roughly... So I'm roughly just using the dome shapes for the white silhouette. And I'm not worried, I'm just uh, using it as a blob shape at the moment. And there's another one there, just a little flat dome. The main thing that we want to try and get confident with or enjoy is the top of the um, cow parsley silhouette. And I'm just doing tiny little wiggles and pressing hard with my 2B pencil because I want to show that they're um, showing up. And then we've got a little dip and another little bit. So I'm just doing squiggles, really. It's really rough. In fact, some of them you can see as little funny little spikes. Okay, so I'm trying to get lots of, sort of texture. Nice sharp pencil. Pressing soft. So I can think, yeah, there's that one there. And all the points should be we're going to have a nice sweep down into the centre that we want here. I'm going to pull this one. This one's going out actually. So we want that one to be going around here like that. And we've got another shallow cut shape. And then you want another wiggly bit. I'm doing another little wiggle. Just like that. And we can block in the um, all the little pieces afterwards. Not, not to do that. Now I'm pressing really hard now. Really, really hard. So I might get down to the stem. Just starting to pull it down. And we worry about all these little bits afterwards. We don't have to worry about that yet. They're sort of, as long as they're all pulling in to a central point, that is all that matters. Okay, and then we've got loads more coming out here. Okay, so now that I've got this top silhouette, 
shape and now I think that's roughly where I um, want this silhouette and I've got this edge here and, that, and I'm going to pull this down, I've got a nice bow to that Pulling it down, pulling it down, pulling it down. So I'm not actually counting how many, I'm not going one, two, three, four, five, I'm just guessing. Okay. As long as it visually makes sense. Hello, Ant. <laughs> <laughs> um, as long as long as all the little stems come to the centre, this is what we want. Okay, and we can even adjust that. Look, put a little bit of highlight on that. You see, so it's so structurally it starts to make sense, right? So and let's start to pull this down. So when I'm if I want to get a straight line, although I can't remember you see me do it in class where I rest my little pinky and I drag my hand down. So I don't attempt to move my fingers. If I want to draw a straight line, I pull my, my whole arm down. So I'm not moving my fingers and I'm not moving my wrist. So the action is from my elbow. So I get a better, stronger line. So try things like that. So I'm not doing this, remember? So here's a diagonal line here that we can see. So I can pull up like that and pull up like that. And then we've got another in the distance. We've got another pretty little um, bit of cow party. And again, I'm going to do the wiggly edge look completely made up. Okay. But as long as we've got this pretty dome shape, okay, now we can start to give an indication of what we can see. Okay, as long as we've got all these lines going back to our central point, then this visually structurally makes sense. Okay, and then there's another little one out there that's quite pretty. So it's just wiggly little lines that we're doing. Just pull it down. So we've got some pattern here at the back. Well, it's all higgledy piggledy, and we, I can't, let, let's say what, we need to suggest that. We, we're not going to spend get out our magnifying glasses and attempt to um record all that incredible fine detail so what we're going to do is we're going to do um think about do combinations of crisscrosses plus and minuses perhaps some triangle shape um imagine you've scattered some hundreds and thousands okay and I'm just going to dot them around so it's just enough to visually catch the eye, okay, as to it being something, but we don't know what. And can you see how it sort of catches the eye a bit? So think of hundreds and thousands, how they will scatter everywhere. So dosh, dots, dashes, bees, anything like that. It's just enough to catch the eye and then this line here now that we're confident that we're happy where it is we can start to draw a heavier line so the light is shining was not shining on the photographic reference it's actually got a dark center and a halo on the left and on at the top and at the bottom but just, I'm probably going to weight it predominantly at the bottom. Okay, and I'm just going to do it like that. And now we can start to find things a bit more. 
And now you've got a choice. Um, have you all got charcoal or felt tips? What have you got? Everybody got charcoal. Right, soft pencils. So up in this area here, we need to make this all dark, don't we? Because this is this reference, it looks practically black. Okay, so in order for this to visually... Oh, if I just push that over. In order for this to really come forward and all these pretty sharp edges to come forward, we've got a choice. We can either get, we can get a felt tip pen, biro, and we want to try and make this just as I did in this quick sketch. You see I've started to define the edge around it to make this come up light. We're ready to do this now in this sketch that we've got here. So you could use a very soft pencil. So, I, so the one pencil that I'm sketching with at the moment is a um, 2B pencil. So this is a 6B. So you could just start just by wiggling loads of scribbling we're quite quickly going to start to define our shadow around this shape so you could do it in 2 pencil okay and i'm doing lots of little wiggles i'm not trying to um do big smooth marks because it's the undergrowth or the bushes behind us okay so we can really start to to work in, really start smudging, to really start to get this to start to, to, to show. Or equally, you could do it with um, charcoal. So now that I'm just wiggling around, following that little edge that I um, put to show. I can start quite quickly just to smudge around and start to work in. So it's up to you whether you're picking up your charcoal um, or a soft pencil. Okay, so we can really start to get stuck in and get this lovely and dark. So we're going to get wonderful mucky mitts. But whoops, because it's only by um, pressing this down we're going to be able to make this lovely, pretty cowslip head show up. So obviously if you're working on coloured paper, then this will give you a bit of an advantage, I suppose. So it's not until I start colouring all of this in. But this is going to start to, to show up. Yeah, we want that to show up too. Like that. Oops. Yeah, we've got some nice little bits around there. I don't know why, but I always think for landscapes, it's always better to work at a diagonal rather than straight up and down. I and mean, obviously we we're just doing this as a relatively quick sketch, so we don't have not even I don't actually have a watch with me, so I've actually no idea what the time is. Oh well, that's not happening. Right. Well, that's the one that's coming up there, so I'm going to bring that down. Oh yeah, we've got this one up here, haven't we? So, you can see quite quickly. Now we need to blend that a little bit. So, this is just a dry brush.
Ganz gut. That's it. So now <clears throat> it can start to get more stuck in you. It makes it much more easy for you to see, doesn't it? Okay. So now we need to go back and we've got oh, lots of higgledy piggledy shapes, is what I would say. Is so I think the more irregular probably the you know you want to to um give that the suggestion so i'm i'm now thinking right i need to pull that one down there i've got some lighter ones at the back so don't don't be afraid to um Press lighter with some lines and darker with others. And that is how we are going to be able to suggest the structures coming through. So we've got some lines going down there. That one is going like that. And then there's another one there. As long as you, when you've drawn your line, as long as you've got some. Um, as long as you've got the edges coming down towards you, pulling them down to your um, line that you're drawing, then it was it will make sense for you. Okay, because we can't really see this flower. It's just on this photographic record. It's just a, a blob, isn't it? Um, uh, so really, what we want to try and do is, is just it's just what I, I just wanted us to be able to enjoy sketching something, making it suggestion. So we've got some dark lines down here. So I've got that one. And I've got that one. And then there's another one here. And let's just start to pull that down. And there's another one here. And then we've got, I might just rub that out a little bit actually, because we've got some really nice light bits in here. Oh, sorry, I'm <laughs> over the table. <laughs> so, let's do that. Let's pull that. Let's do some wiggly bits going along down here. There's one there. Oh yeah, I've, I've started to lose that one. So I might have to add some. The other thing you could do, if you've done like I've just done and gone over a spot, um, and it doesn't come off properly with, with the rubber, this is where I would be getting, wouldn't be afraid to read, um, to think about using white acrylic paint. You say, right, I wanted to put some highlight in there, so all I'm gonna do is, is do that to get it to get it back where I want it to. See look, just by smudging here I'm losing the halo there. Let's bring that back. Let's bring that back. There's a little light through here. So this is where can it's quite useful sometimes but you can start to break things up a bit so now we need to get the whiteness out of this don't we so if we just so i'm just smudging this with my mucky mitts because when we squint at this photographic reference okay the this area here is what's really lovely and white isn't it all down here is much darker so if i'm squinting at it now with my eyes i can see that these lines that i've started to to use can go darker can you all see that my logic 
Can you see that? Yeah. So this is what we really want to, to do. So now we can go back in. Okay, now I'm more confident the way all of these lines come in. And we can start to draw harder with our pencil. So we can start to bring these in. Okay. So this is where it changes here. We've got the background showing. So I need to show the gap. Okay. Normally I would be tilting my page to get the angle that I want. I'm just trying to build it in and working darker. All right. But do you really want to bring out the stubbornness of the to come through this? The more we can get stuck in, the better it is. Mm. I'm just going to go around this edges here so you can see. All I'm doing is just doing lots of squiggles in the background with the charcoal, with my mark felt it pen. But I really want to show texture in here. And so I'm just doing lots of little squiggly bits. And I'm beginning to. Right. I haven't drawn in charcoal for a while actually, it's a refreshing change. Now down here is obviously where it gets much more interesting. <laughs> so we can start to fade this out. I will be working back into this when I've got more time. What we really want to try and preserve is this lovely edge and really beginning to press hard where we know all these lovely shapes are come down so we can really start to enjoy the way all these stems go down into the center okay and start to pull pull them down 
so we can really start to see the structure of it whenever it's all falling down. All right, so there's one here. Well, let's not lose that one because it looks quite pretty there. Mm -hmm. I was hoping by doing this effect it might. Um, Well, I think the more the more you draw, the better you get. And sometimes I think um, it's you might find it refreshing to say, right, oh, well, you know, um, I don't try and say to yourself, okay, I'm going to tr we'll try really, really hard just to to roughly see something and look at it, and try really hard not to. Um, Get my rubber out. I mean, this line's not that particularly fantastic. Okay, so you could pull it out. However, equally, you could you could say, well, you know, I'm gonna just put it out like that. So we've got another one going off here, actually. That's a nice squeak. So I'm resting my little finger on the paper and I'm just going to give a little squeak like that, a little arc. And again look, we've got this lovely little suggestion of all these shapes and these ones are very much hundreds and thousands all over the shop. So let's just do some squiggles. Okay, and then we've got all oh, lots of loads of swiftly strange shapes that we can too blinded to see. So I'm just going to say, right, that's that's what it is. And it actually, if I'm looking at this line here, I'm putting my hand down. This one, or oh, this one goes behind, so that's not attached to that one. So this one here comes down to a point there, and this one comes across and attaches to it right there, and then we get another line. Another tip would be when you're drawing your lines, can you see I've pressed hard here? I've left a gap almost not pressed at all, and then I've pressed hard again. That's because in the photographic reference, and I can see, you know, I'll move it across a bit. You see it's going dark, light, dark. So this can give us clues of how we can get more movement in our pictures and our sketches. So immediately below the cow parsley, it's really dark for about two centimetres because of the weight of the flower head. It's casting a shadow immediately underneath the head, and then the stem is in light. Okay, so if I'm going to be doing this on my my reference here, which I've just very very roughly sketched in, it's actually going off the page. Okay, and we've got it actually going over here, actually higher up. Oops. Okay, let's extend the mark a bit then. The beauty of pencil work. Okay, in fact, I'm beginning to lose it in the back, so let's rub that bit off. Mm -hmm. So the, the shadow would be up here, and then light, and then down. I think just for time reasons, I will probably won't bother to put that in. Now the only snag with charcoal is that if you're not careful you can start to lose your highlight. So I'm just wiping my hand with a rag, uh, a dry flannel, so that hopefully my mitt, my my uh, mitts aren't quite so mucky. Right. <laughs> so we need to get. So if we keep working on getting this strong definition happening on these. Then we can really start to bring out the shapes that we can see just by pulling it down. Mm. 
And this is essentially all I will be doing. It's just to enjoy doing lots of little squiggles in all directions because it's undergrowth that I'm looking at. So when you have issues like that, just by lots of doing lots of dashes, lots of dots and dashes and things, you can start to um, suggest the structures and all of its sort of thing. So I'm going to get my rubber out now. Got a flashy rubber as well. I think mine's gone off. And I'm now going to use this to lift out some more. And if you start to use lift it out more and um, wiggle it in all sorts of different directions, we will start to get the cow parsley sparkle I suppose and lift out even more. Hopefully you can see that. Can you see that it's all beginning to to lift up? Now we can start to use this one here. this one here so we could even now just start to once it's fading in the bottom we could use a rubber because there's so many yeah there's some more bushes here that we can see so let's just start to wiggle in random zigzags across and now i'm starting to think right Got some more patches down here that we really can't quite tell what they are. But there's so many grasses. Let's just do a few wiggles. We've got, oh yeah, we've got strong line here. So here we need to work out. Uh, we need to make a tonal difference between these two here. They're actually quite similar. If we half close our eyes, they're actually quite similar in tonal value, which means they're quite close together. Some, but usually, as I was showing you before in the um, cow party, we want to emphasize the tonal difference. So if I want this one to be more dominant, so if I just show you here, at the moment you see there's not really much difference between the two. So if I push hard here, And I read that having that little black bit there is actually really quite useful because it's going to outline the stem for me. Just there. So I'm switching to a fine brush. I mean, fine brush. Ah, a fine marker. I'm going to slim down that a little bit. Okay. What's that? Now we need to make sure that this, we demonstrate that this line is in front. Okay, and let's just pull that down. Just sketch it down. And this one is behind. And it's disappearing over now. And then we've got, oh Lord, so many grasses in the distance, haven't we? We've got a real lovely squiggly line with all sorts of wonderful greenery and stuff. So I'll be doing lots of, let's do lots of random squiggles around the edge. 
because we can't possibly have the time to work out each and every individual little shape. So when I'm stuck with sort of shapes like this, I will be half closing my eyes. I mean, I've actually missed that one there, which is a bit of a shame, but never mind. These things happen. But we've got another one coming through here. Oh yes, we've got some nice pretty ones down here, haven't we? It's Sue. It's a shame I've dragged that all the way down because I'm not really good do. Is we've got a line through here and another line through there. I'm doing it ever so roughly. Just to give you an idea. Because we've then got this coming down. It's actually going snaving slightly. And then this one's sort of actually going down here somewhere, isn't it? The more you draw, So I'm holding um, a charcoal stick, it's quite a small one, and I'm holding it with my fingertips, and I'm holding it flat, and I'm just scraping it up. And I'm trying to suggest grasses. Can you see that? Because we can't possibly, you know, just by pulling it up and down, you want to try and get a transition between. Um, the black at the top and the meadow. So I'm trying to, oops, we're trying to start to suggest how the two could blend together. So we're beginning to bring it down. Whoops. 
So at the bottom here, I'm using my charcoal stick on its end and to try and suggest all those grasses I'm just holding it with my fingertips and then just doing flicks like this in random directions because we've got this so much um, grasses and goodness knows what going on there okay. Which you can't possibly so that so by having a a, a, a sharp um, flicks here and there, you can start to suggest that it's got this textured field. So that's that's essentially how I've been trying to do that. Now I've lost the highlight here, but if I squint at it with my eyes, this area here is too light and too dark. So if I this is where charcoal comes into its own because we can start to smudge a little bit just very lightly so because we want to retain this texture that we can see in this picture okay but we also want to try and sharpen things up a bit because we need to bring in some more of this detail in here and we're losing beginning to lose highlights which is the nature of charcoal it's a mucky thing but it's a really great way of um getting the dark tone of values that we need really quickly. As long, so that's why it's really useful to have um, rubber because it is uh, you get lovely looking it. Right. So what I'm going to do now is start to again with my rubber. And we've lost. So as soon as I press hard on the round here, we start to bring out the highlights again so it's like drawing with your rubber isn't it just doing lots of little wiggles just to bring them back again I haven't defined that one yet. Let's just concentrate on this one. I think. Okay, well, I'm just going to do some scribbles around here now so I can start to get it working. The main thing is, is have you got a nice highlight? Are you managing to keep the white? Because these, um, you can't really start to get this to look right until we get the difference, we get the contrast, we've got to try hard to keep this light. Because even though I haven't defined this yet, it's just a white blob, isn't it, at the moment? Because I'm trying to pull somewhere with a rubber. Can you see how, there you go, look, just by doing that, look, we'll start there. Now I've pulled some light there, look. You see, we can start to get things to define it. All right. Now if I have more time, I'd be saying, right, where do these connect? Where do we want? We want a strong one here and one there. But as I say, I'm not counting these, but as long as you have a variety of marks and they're all coming to the central point okay. and structurally this flower head is going to make sense because we've got all of these points coming down and coming towards the center that we want 
that this edge can come up a bit more so that I can get my felt tip. So actually, I want to bring that up. Pull it up a little bit more, that's better. Okay. Bring it down. Let's change the shape. And this is darker. So this one can up. That one, that one, that one. Now let's now we need a nice sharp pencil. I'm losing these edges. You could use a biro, I suppose, as well. Have a go at sketching with biros. That's a really good one. Let's sort of try and define this edge again. And this bit here we've got to get a lot darker because this shapes here are not going to show up until I do that. So I'm going to get my felt tip out again.
the white is beginning to fade. So I'm, I'm lifting it out of my rubber, but I'm trying to wiggle it in different directions so it's uneven lifting. And that way, when you look at it more closely, it looks more broken, light, rather than a solid white. And then I can go around back and start to go around and define the edge that I see, or random shapes that I see. Okay, to suggest the flowers in the distance, or the ones that are here. Okay, there's one here. And then I, I use pressing really hard with a soft pencil. To press down so that I can start to suggest um, the flower head again and if you keep it really sharp like this like a sun ray then you you're suggesting the edge and you can begin to I don't know if you can see that where you can start to it starts to visually make sense and all this ziggy zaggy wiggly shapes start to suggest the flower head can you can you see that okay so, so you get this sort of shape but it starts again so it's still very loose and free but obviously it's up to use to mean some of this is quite thick pen and then what we what we're doing here if you look on the reference here We've got some little gaps here, so we could use our press hard with our pencil or with our felt tip around here, so we could start to get this mid tone here. So, just by doing all these little wiggly edges around here, I'm doing that with a fine pencil, and then when it comes to these ones here, I'm pressing hard again with a pencil and there. It down. I haven't really done that one yet. I've just concentrated on this head here and I'm doing a little bit around here. It's just a suggestion, but I just thought it'd be a really nice way of just trying this and just, just doing different marks. So you can see by looking at that and by looking at that, tonally is similar, but I need to do a little bit more on that. Can you see? So, not got as many stems, I suppose, as in the reference photo, but that doesn't matter. As I say, as long as you've got everything pulling towards this centre, okay, then it's going to start to make um, sense in the way that it's going. So you've got patches in the way that it, it starts to go. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. That was really just a fan win. I mean, obviously, you could just keep going and start to drag this down and start to just enjoy I don't know, having a wiggle wiggle lots of little shapes you could do bits in biro bits and as you say bits in the felt tip um just to start bringing things forward really so this edge here for example is not going to stand up until i press really hard with my pencil and now that i've done that and pressed hard yeah you see now, now that I've done that, that stem stands up because I've just done lots of little wiggly shapes around here. So that's really how I would just enjoy working into it, okay? And then obviously, so if this was a painting, we would be just graduating the paint, putting it all on. I mean, if this was a watercolour painting, we would be probably masking this all up with masking fluid, wouldn't we? We draw the shape of the cow parsley in masking fluid or we draw it with a stick or a ruling pen so we get all these nice shapes going on. We let it get absolutely bone dry and then we'd mix a really strong dark watercolour and do a wash and then let it get bone dry again and then we'd rub off the masking fluid and then that would reveal the highlight that we're looking for in the cow parsley. That's if we were doing a watercolour. But if we were doing um, uh, an acrylic painting, we could just block all this background in and then we would be putting the highlights or the white on afterwards. So this bit around the bottom here, I can see, tonally it's not really showing up much because it's too light. So if I started to, again, do lots of random tones, 
above and below and the odd occasional wiggle then this will slowly start to develop into a floral shape you see now that I've started to it's starting to to show up so that's essentially what I'd be doing just all the way around just enjoying doing lots of wiggles lots of different mark makings when it when you um when it gets too dark, don't be afraid to say, okay, well, I'm beginning to lose the highlight in here. It's getting a bit mishmashy. Let's bring some darkness down here. Okay, let's get my rubber. Let's lift that highlight back up again and on here to really emphasize that I've got all these sort of shapes. And once you bring some more charcoal in, you can start to, just as I've done in previous ones, you can start to um do highlight the grasses by using your rubber so you get more more sparkliness going on and in other areas you could just be doing some more smudging in the way that it's working all right so i hope you've enjoyed that that's something different to do